So we're going to take a look now at exercise 4-3. Ecofabrics Eco has budgeted overhead cost of 945000 It has allocated overhead on a plant-wide basis to its two products, wool and cotton, using direct labor hours, which are estimated to be 450000 for the current year. The companies decided to experiment with activity-based costing as created two activity pools and related activity cost drivers. These two cost pools are cutting, cost drivers machine hours, and design would be number of setups. Overhead allocated to the cutting cost pool is 360000 and 585000 is allocated to the design cost pool. Additional information related to the pools is follows. Machine hours 100,000 for wool, cotton's 100,000 for a total of 200,000. Number of setups for wool is 1,000, cotton 500 for a total of 1,500. We're to determine the amount of overhead allocated to the wool product line and the cotton product line using activity based costing. So as we go into here, I'm going to pull up a um, Excel sheet so as we go into here the first thing we're going to do is to create our various um, pools so our first is going to be the uh, various pools we're going to call them the activity cost pools then we'll have our cost drivers which it told us and the estimated overhead so our pools cutting and design the cost driver machine hours and with um, the design pools it's going to be the number of setups the overhead is given at 360 and for design 585 So the first thing we're going to do is come up with our activity-based overhead rates. For cutting, we've got 360,000. Divide that by 200,000. And the 360 divided by 200,000, just want to confirm, Come on. Well, there I go. Um, the machine hours here is a for cutting total of two hundred thousand machine hours, and so as we go back here, we're going to take our three hundred sixty thousand divided by two hundred thousand and we come up with one dollar and eighty cents per machine hour when we deal with our design we've got five hundred and eighty five thousand divided by fifteen hundred designs to give us three hundred and ninety dollars per design setup Okay, so then as we move on, the activity-based costing will be for cutting under wool, and here will be cotton, our cutting is going to be 100,000 times dollar 80 and the wool portion here 180 for cutting or excuse me for the cotton piece we've got 100,000 times 180 for our design 
We've got 1,000 um, setups at 390 a setup for our wool. And for our cotton, we have 500 setups at 390 per setup, which is 195. So as you see here, our Um, 570000 would be the costing that would be allocated to wool. The cotton would be um, for the cutting piece, 180. I guess I need to keep moving on here. Sorry about that. Um, then Um, so moving on here, then for our, whoops, here we go, uh, 570, I just added it wrong here, 375. So that is the total cost allocated for each one. Next, we have to come up with the um, direct labor hours, the um, amounts that are applied to each. In the estimated overhead, we've got divide that by our direct labor hours. We've got our estimated overhead to be 945,000. which is a combination of the two of them together. And we'll divide that by 450,000 labor hours. And what we'll get there is $2.10 per direct labor hour. So again, with our traditional costing, we have got 225,000. Two hundred, excuse me, two twenty-five times two dollars and ten cents for wool. We would have four hundred seventy-two thousand five hundred, and then for our cotton, we would also have four seventy-two five. So as you see here, the wool product line is allocated. Um, 97500 more overhead cost when we put in an activity-based costing system. As a result, the cotton line is allocated um, 97500 less. Again, the purpose of this is depending on how we allocate the cost ultimately determines and drives the price that we sell these products for. Okay, so let's take a look back at going to now um, the third uh, objective here in this learning. If I can get my PowerPoint going. So the third objective here is looking at the benefits that ABC has in comparison to traditional costing. There are, is definitely more of an accurate costing for the products we do have an enhanced control over these overhead costs. And as a result of those top two, we ultimately then get better management decisions. Now, having multiple cost pools provides us with more relevant cost drivers because the costs get allocated based on the drivers used to produce each of those products. 
So when we're dealing with multiple cost pools, again, multiple cost pools, it is more expensive. But in doing so, we are going to have a better um, accurate of the costs that are assigned to each of these products. As you see here, there can be um, a cost pool for drilling and milling, the cutting and trimming, the pressing, the assembly, the painting, sanding, and sewing. More involved, better detail. The activity levels, as you've seen here by reading the chapter, we can have activity levels at a unit level, we can have activities at a batch level, a product level, and a facility level. Now the unit level is for each unit of production, such as assembly of cell phones. For the batch, every time a new batch is produced, and the example here is ice cream. Or we could have at a product level. So anytime the company produces a new product, that may be, as this example shows, the time spent testing a new drug. And then lastly, the facility level, such as a hospital. So as we re relate to these various types of activity levels, we've got for unit levels, we may have the drilling, the cutting, the milling, um, assembly, and painting. With batch, we'll have setups, inspections, ordering. Product level will be designs. Facility level relate to the overall um, factory, such as plant salaries or depreciation or property taxes or utilities. Now, as you see the drivers associated each to each one of these, they really do make sense. When we're dealing with the unit level, of course, related to machine-related activities, we're going to use the driver of machine hours. Related to labor activities, we're going to use labor hours. When we relate to batch activities, we're going to um, use either number of setups, number of purchase orders, number of inspections um, to handle our drivers. Product level will be designs, and then facility levels generally would relate to the overall square footage. Advantage, increase the perceived value of a product or service, such as um, providing the cost for the engineering design or the machining services. Assembly painting with service companies, again, it's going to be a different type of activity, but the surgeries, the research, or the deliveries. Non-value activities are really the key that we want to focus on because we need to um, be aware that those do add cost to the final product and yet we want to um, be able to limit those non-value added costs or be aware of what we can do to change those. So non-value added cost in manufacturing would be storage of the inventory, moving it, inspections, fixing defective goods, and setups. With service companies, those that don't add value are the appointments, the reception, our bookkeeping, our traveling, our ordering, and our advertising. So ultimately, ABC does provide us with a better um, avenue for managers to make decisions. Now, activity-based management is the way in which managers do use ABC in order to make these better decisions through this activity-based process. Negatives, it's expensive. And again, with all of this, it can be arbitrary as to how they are assigning them. When do we use it? When our lines differ in volume and manufacturing um, complexity? When our lines are very diverse? When overhead costs, this is a big one, contribute to a large portion of the overhead cost, then ABC may be right for a company. Again, 
when the manufacturing process or products has changed or ultimately a an employee error is when they ignore the data so you take a look at doing these do it um, exercises while I'll go over some of the exercises the same concept does apply to service industries as it does to manufacturing industries we are just trying to keep abreast of how these costs are identified and where they really should be associated to or which is which services should bear the brunt of those costs um, again when we're looking at um, the a CPA firm using the traditional costing system our overhead rates are at 50 percent of our to our direct labor costs um, and so you see here in applying the overhead rates we come up with an operating income here of 50,000 but if we use our activity based costing and take those uh, pools with the drivers and utilize overhead rates per activity then we see that our depending on what those overheads are where we apply them to may be different in the overall um, how we cost them so in this case by assigning costs we have administration of 33,500 assigned customer development of 104 and recruiting of 133 you see that the overhead applied from the traditional versus the ABC varies which ultimately varies our bottom profit margin okay so let's take a look here and go back and do a couple more problems exercise 4-4 all tax manufacturers two products car wheels and truck wheels to determine the amount of overhead to assign to each product line the controller has developed the following information estimated wheels produced for cars are 40,000 and trucks are 10,000 direct labor hours per wheel for a car is one but for a truck is three total estimated costs for the two product lines are 770,000 so we are supposed to compute the overhead cost assigned to the car wheels and the truck wheels assuming that direct labor hours is what's used to allocate these costs so let's go back here and start with the direct labor hours for car wheels 40,000 40,000 wheels at 11 bucks for labor hours excuse me let me I'm getting ahead of myself um, it takes one hour per wheel so that's 40,000 um, hours our direct labor hours for truck wheels would be 10,000 wheels at three hours per wheel or 30,000 hours our total hours used here are 70,000 now our total estimated overhead of 770,000 let me make sure I have that right 770,000 divided by our 70,000 direct labor hours that we received from right up here give us so I'm going to write here total estimated overhead and this is total direct 
labor hours, the 770 divided by 70,000 direct labor hours gives us $11 per direct labor hour. Now the overhead assigned car wheels, we've got 40,000 at 11. 440,000 would be assigned to car wheels. For our truck wheels, we've got 30,000 at 11. We would allocate to the car wheels 330,000 for total overhead of 770,000. Next, it says Herman is not satisfied with the traditional method of allocating overhead because he believes that most of the overhead costs relate to the truck wheels product line because of its complexity. He therefore develops the following three activity cost pools and related cost drivers to better understand these costs. So the pools would be setting up the machines the assembling, and the inspection. The cost drivers, again, 1,000 setups. The assembly, 70,000 labor hours, and the inspection, 1,200 inspections. And then from there, we know what the overhead estimated costs here show setting up machines 220, assembly 280, and inspection 270,000. Now it wants us to compute the activity-based overhead rates for these three cost pools. Well, we know here we're going to take our 220,000 overhead estimated divided by our 1,000 um, setups to give us $220 per um, setting up a machine. The assembly would be the 280,000 divided by our 70,000 hours to give us $4 as an overhead, and the inspection would be the 270,000 divided by the cost driver of 1,200 inspections to give us an overhead rate in this category of $225 per inspection. Next, compute the cost that's assigned to the car wheels and truck wheel product lines using an activity-based costing system when given this information. So we see here with a car, we have number of setups of 200, the truck, number of setups of 800. The direct labor hours with cars, 40,000, trucks, 30, and number of inspections. Look at this, cars, 100 inspections, trucks are 1,100 inspections. So if we go here and determine how this would work with the um, using ABC we've got our activity cost pools it's going to be setting up machines assembling and inspection are um, for car wheels and this will be um, expected use of cost driver per product that we came up with in the previous that we just talked about 200 machine setups the activity overhead rates for setting up machines we've got 220 so the cost that would be assigned for car wheels and for setting up these um, ah. no, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna worry about it the costs assigned here would be 44,000 for assembly we knew that the um, assembling of 40,000 the overhead rate here of 4 would be cost assigned here of 160 
and then with inspection we have 100 inspections for the cars and 225 for our activity based overhead rate would give us 22,500 per inspections so our total cost assigned to the cars would be 220 226,500. That's what would be assigned to the cars. Under the trucks, so we'll have here the truck wheels. Again, we're going to have the same setting up machines. For truck wheels, we had 800. Our activity based, again, 220, which gives us the cost assigned here. One seventy six. Our assembly of thirty thousand at four dollars is also going to give us the cost assigned there of one twenty. And then our inspections of eleven hundred times two hundred and twenty five. We're going to have the cost assigned here. Excuse me. of 247.5. Our total cost then assigned to the trucks would be $543,500. It asks us now, what do you believe Herman should do? Now again, this is a big what if because we're assuming these cost drivers are reasonable of what's really happening between the two product lines. If in case, if that is in fact the case, then by all means he would want to switch to activity-based costing because it really provides a, a more reasonable or accurate cost that would provide um, ultimately better decision-making for the, um, the, the department. Okay, moving on here. Let's look to see. E6. E6 asks us to compute the all these costs into activity pool costs. So Santana Corporation manufactures snowmobiles in its Blue Mountain, Wisconsin plant. The following costs are budgeted for the first quarter's operation. We've got our machine set up in direct, our inspections of 16,000, our tests of 4,000. Sorry, I forgot where I left off, but the inspections, the tests, insurance of 110 for the plant, the engineering design, the depreciation machinery of 520, machine setup, indirect labor, property taxes, oil heating, electricity, plant lighting, engineering prototypes, depreciation on the plant, electricity for the machinery, and then machine maintenance wages. Our job is to classify these costs into activity cost pools using the following information. So what they want us to do is break them into engineering, machinery, machine setup, quality control, factory utilities, maintenance. And then from there, we'll identify cost drivers that can be used to assign each cost pool to each line of snowmobile snowmobiles. So. We'll look at these. The first thing we're going to do is create our various activity cost pools that they tell us about. Our engineering, our machinery, our machine setup, quality control, factory 
utilities and maintenance so I'm going to go in here and create Trying to make it bigger here. There we go. So the first thing we'll do is set up our various activity cost pools. So activity cost pools. We've got our engineering. We've got our machinery our machine setup, we've got our quality control, factory, utilities, and maintenance. Now the next thing we need to do is to figure out the um, budgeted cost that would go into each one of these pools. Engineering if we look here, which of these costs do we believe would be associated with engineering? Well, for sure, engineering design. Oh, here we got engineering prototypes. Let's just take those two for now and put that in the engineering piece. So we know our engineering design and our engineering prototypes. Machinery. If we look at these costs, what will we put into machinery? Now we also have a machine set up, but this is just the machinery. Well, depreciation and electricity. So we're going to go back here and show for machinery, depreciation just on the machinery, and the electricity for the machinery. Machine setups, we have let's see here, indirect materials, 4,000. and machine set up indirect labor. So let's put those in this particular pool. We've got machine set up indirect labor and machine set up indirect materials. Quality control. What do we have here? Inspections oh, and tests. So we, in this activity or pool, we will have our inspections and our tests. Then our factory utilities are going to constitute a lot of these. We've got the depreciation on the plant here. We've got insurance on the plant. We've got property taxes, oil and heating, electricity, plant lighting. So in our factory utilities here, we're going to put in our um, property taxes, our oil, heating, our electricity for the plant lighting, our depreciation on the plant, and our insurance on the plant. Then we have one more for maintenance, machine ma maintenance. We will um, have our machine maintenance wages. So as you see here, we've got to create the pool. And then from there, 
we have to decide what is allocating these costs. Now the next thing we'll need to do is what is the cost driver that we're going to use to assign each of these cost pools to each line of snowmobiles. So if we look, a lot of this is just going to be common sense. When we deal with engineering, it would make sense that the cost uh, driver would be engineering hours because we're dealing with engineering design and engineering prototype, we would do engineering hours. Next, when we're dealing with the machinery, of course, we would put that to be machine hours. When we've got machine setups, we would have the number of setups. As it relates to the quality control, we'll have in this one number of tests or inspections. This one with factory um, utilities, generally speaking, we'll do square footage. Sometimes we'll do machine hours based on which, which one would be more applicable to the um, costs. Oftentimes one product will handle a lot more square footage than another product in that case, we would do square footage. But in the case where that is fairly equal and yet the machine hours are drastically different, then we would use machine hours there. And then last, with the machine maintenance wages, again, we probably will use machine hours. Okay. We're going to take a look at E9, Air United manufactures two products, missile range instruments and space pressure gauges. During April, 50 range instruments and 300 pressure gauges were produced and overhead costs of 94,500 were estimated. An analysis of estimated overhead costs reveals the activities of material handling, cost drivers, number of requisitions, total cost 40,000, machine setups, as an activity, cost driver, number of setups, total cost 21.5, and then quality inspections, cost drivers, number of inspections, total cost 33,000. The cost driver volume for each product was as follows. Cost drivers, number of requisitions, number of setups, number of inspections, and then the volume of instruments, 400 for requisitions, gauges, 600 for a total of 1,000, and then setups, instruments 200, gauges 300, inspections, instruments 200, gauges 400. We're going to determine the overhead rate for each activity. So I'm going to pull up the Excel worksheet that we can use for this exercise. And the first piece we need to do here is come up with the overhead rates. So the material handling, handling um, estimated overhead is 40,000. The expected use of cost drivers per activity, 1,000. And the overhead rate is at 40. With machine setups, we're dealing with 21,500. The uh, expected use, 500, with the overhead rate of 43. Then our quality inspections, 33,000. The expected use of 600. And the overhead rate of 55 for um, those various activity pools. Now the next section asks us assign the manufacturing overhead costs for April to the two products using activity-based costing. So what we'll do now is based on what we've come up with here and the information they gave us as to which the instruments and the gauges 
um, the volume is, we're going to assign these. So with requisitions, we have 400 and the cost is 40 bucks, as you see here, times 400 gives us a cost of 16,000. For gauges, we have 600 times 40 bucks for a total cost of 24,000. Our costs assigned here, 40,000. Machine setups, we know we it's the rate is $43 per setup. Instruments has 200 machine setups at 43 bucks for a total cost of 8600. Gauges has 300 machine setups at 43 bucks from up here for a total cost of 129. And the 129 and the 8600 give us 21,500 there. Then with our inspections, again, overhead is $55 per inspection. We have 200 inspections and in instruments at 55 bucks for 11,000. Our gauges, 400 at 55 bucks for 22,000. And here the total cost here is at 33,000. The total cost assigned 94.5. The total cost assigned here, 58.9, here, 35.6. Now the units produced of instruments were 50. So the overhead cost per unit produced here is 7.12. With gauges, we had 300 gauges produced, and we have $196 in um, overhead cost per gauge. Now the next part just says to write a letter explaining the benefit here and primarily as we know this um, activity-based costing focuses on activities performed and the overhead costs get assigned based on cost drivers. So in this scenario, we're going to have just a more accurate product costing. The last one I'm going to do is problem 4-2. Your homework assignment is 4-1, so I'm going to do 4-2 for you. And 4-2 here. <laughs> shows us Schultz Electronics manufactures two high ultra high definition television models the Royale which sells for 1600 and a new model the Majestic which sells for 1300 the production cost computed per unit under traditional costing is shown below there in 2017 Schultz manufactured 25,000 units of the Royale and 10,000 units of the Majestic. The overhead rate of $38 per direct labor hour was determined by dividing total expected manufacturing overhead by 7,600,000 of 7,600,000 by the total direct labor hours, 200,000 for the two models. Under traditional costing the gross profit on the models, was the Royale $552 and the Majestic at $590. Because of the difference, management is considering phasing out the Royale model. But before finalizing its decision, we're going to try another costing method, ABC. So we see here the pools, the drivers, the estimated costs, the expected use of the drivers, and the overhead rate. The cost drivers used for each product were Again, purchase orders for um, a driver, machine setups, machine hours, and inspections. 
assigned the total 2017 manufacturing overhead cost to the two products using ABC and determined the overhead cost per unit. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the information of the allocation of total manufacturing overhead using ABC. So with purchase orders, we know the rate is 30 bucks. Well, we have for Royale 17,000. The cost assigned 17,000 times 30 bucks would be 500 and $10,000. The machine setups, we had 5,000 times 50 bucks overhead for 250,000. The machine hours for the Royale, 75,000 at 40 bucks gives us 3 million. The inspections, 11,000 at 25 bucks gives us 275,000. For a total here of four million thirty-five thousand, we produce twenty-five thousand units. So our cost per unit is going to be the total cost divided by the number of units produced, or one sixty-one forty. We're going to do the same for the Majestic. Twenty-three thousand drivers here. Cost assigned times thirty bucks, six ninety. We've got drivers of thirteen thousand. Total cost assigned times 50 would be 650. We have machine hours, 45,000 times 40 bucks, 1,800. Inspections at 25 bucks, 17,000. Cost assigned, 425. So the cost assigned for the Majestic, 3,565. We produce 10,000 units. So, as you see here, the cost divided by the number of units we produced gives us our $356.50. Our total overhead would be the 510 plus the 690 or 1,200,000. Here, here, Okay, the next requirement, the cost per unit and gross profit of each model under ABC costing were for direct materials, 700, for direct labor, 120, and manufacturing overhead, 161.40. We got that from up here. So our total costs here are 981.40. We sold each unit for sixteen hundred. With our cost per unit of nine eighty one forty, we've got really a gross margin here of six eighteen. Now with Majestic, we've got our direct materials, our direct labor, and from here our three fifty six fifty is our amount allocated to each unit for eight seventy six fifty. We're selling this unit for $1,300, so you can see right away that um, our $423 is our profit there. Now, are management's future plans for the two models sound? Well, they're not sound. The Royale model is $195 which is the 618 minus the 423 per unit more profitable than the Majestic model. But by applying ABC, we see how the cost can possibly be switched, and in that case, um, the profitability does significantly increase.